watching Gamer Logic, and I'm Mike Murtis. We're going to go back to the 80s and even the late 90s and mid 90s, early 90s, whatever, and talk about really quick walking into a store, may it be like a grocery store or a Kmart, and you go to the video game section, and of course, what's sitting there on the glass display stand or next to all your favorite video games is an old school issue. Of course, it wasn't old school then, but just an early publication may have been Nintendo Power or like what I have here, Game Players Encyclopedia, talking about Nintendo games, EGM, GamePro, old magazines like that that just used to cover games and have all the tips and tricks. And you know, not having a Nintendo Power subscription till about 1992, anytime I saw a video game related magazine, I was always, always, always beg my mom or my dad to pick one up for me. And you know, 25 years later, I sit back and think, and I open magazines, you know, I've recently resubscribed to Nintendo Power. Magazines just do not have that old retro edge to them, that writing, that pseudo-cheesiness that it had to them when you would open up a magazine and read it. They, they're just not the same. I mean, open any issue of Nintendo Power and try to compare it to something new, and it's just like a whole nother world. And obviously it's different because of the video game platforms, but just the writing, just the very essence of it is different. So, to kind of wrap into what we're talking about, I recently was sent a uh, new book slash magazine called The Video Game Archaeologist, or also known as VGA for short. This is the first volume that was released in September of 2010, and this is by uh, Derek Slayton, who's actually done a, uh, another book, which you can check out on Amazon. But uh, it is pretty neat. Uh, he actually goes through a uh, really decent variety of gaming platforms that are retro. Now, he doesn't cover any of the Saturn or Dreamcast stuff. He covers more of the first two generations of gaming. So, you know, like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and stuff like that. Uh, the book runs for about 15 bucks, and he plans on releasing an issue every two months, I believe. You can get it on Amazon, or you can get it on his site. But... What really, really strikes me first off when I open this up is you got to realize that this is just one person doing this actual magazine. And opening it up, I was instantly reminded of my old game players encyclopedias. You know, these had the, uh, the big text and it had the screenshots. And while it wasn't a graphical amazement, the content was awesome, it got to the point, and it was cool. And I'm really happy to say that the VGA actually brings back that retro vibe to it. Now, I don't know if Derek purposely did that, or if he's just kind of channeled the old uh, video game magazine spirit from the past. But that is instantly what it reminds me of, is picking up a retro video game magazine that was actually made in like the 80s and just looking through it. Now Derek offers a lot of his own opinions on the games, he's got some pretty witty and funny comments, and he just covers some great stuff. Uh, just to kind of name a few things that he's got on here, he's got Dragonfire, he's got Tron, Deadly Discs, uh, Wall Street Kid, Metal Storm, which is a relatively uh, unknown game, but a really good one. Um, Super Double Dragon, you know, Genesis games, Master System games. There's tons of different things on here. He also covers some Japanese releases too, which is really awesome. The thing I like about this book is that it doesn't cover the obvious stuff. Like, you're not going to find Super Mario Bros. 3 in this because everybody knows this. This is more of a hidden gems magazine, at least his first issue is. And it's really nice because there's some stuff in here that, uh, you know, I maybe saw as a kid and kind of forgot about. Like Wall Street Kid, I've never played, but I remember reading about it in issues of Nintendo Power. And this kind of reminded me about it. And now I'm actually going to go uh, play it and check it out. Tron Deadly Discs, that's another one that was in this book. And that used to be one of my dad's favorite games. So that brought back some memories and I actually pulled that out. So if you know, you're kind of new to the uh, retro video game collecting, uh, or if you're intermediate, or even if you're a seasoned veteran, there are some really great games in here that are covered that you may not know about and uh, can actually uh, give you an idea of what to look for next. So it is a really great book. Like I said, graphically, it's not going to blow you away, but that really isn't the point. The point is the content, and again, the look of it reminds me of an old school retro video game magazine. 
I am really, really, really looking forward to the next issue of this, and I will definitely be picking it up. I will uh, go ahead and put the links, obviously, in the description so you can go check this out. Like I said, it's on Amazon. You can also check out Derek's website at www.thevgatv.com. Check that out. And, uh, you know, if I had to give it a uh, star rating, I am going to give this a 5 out of 5. I think it's absolutely fantastic. 75 pages is more than enough to be an independent, self-written magazine. There's no ads. You don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, really, really above and beyond what I actually expected. And I don't mean to offend Derek, but uh, I was blown away. I think this is definitely an ex excellent first issue. And uh, if you're looking for something unique to collect in your video game memorabilia collection or magazines, pick this up. It is a definite keeper. I'm Mike Murtis with GamerLogic. Take it easy, guys.